Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, the term miracle is often reserved for the extraordinary, isn't it? Things that shouldn't have happened, couldn't have happened, suddenly become real right before our very eyes. It often gets used in sports, whether it's the miracle on ice in 1980 when the U.S. men's hockey team beat the unbeatable USSR, or even the Minneapolis miracle with the walk-off last-second touchdown by Stefan Diggs. But even beyond sports, when a person is cured of an uncurable disease, when someone was declared dead and comes back to life, when a person walks away from an accident they had no business walking away from, these are declared miracles too. Why? Because they fit the definition of what a miracle is. You might see it there on your screens. Uh, the definition we're using is it's an outstanding or unusual event sometimes manifested by divine intervention in human affairs. Now, oftentimes when we use this definition, it seems to narrow the list of things that qualify or can be classified as miracles. But what I want to do today while looking at Acts chapter 4 is expand our understanding of what qualifies, what can be classified as a miracle, because when we do that, we will begin to see just how many opportunities we actually have to be that witnessing community, to be the people who continually witness to Christ and his death and resurrection. Let me illustrate what I mean by using last week's text and, and this week's text, Acts 3 and 4. Now, what we're told in those texts is that there was a man who was born lame, couldn't walk, right? And, and suddenly, he's able to walk, and that qualifies as a miracle, doesn't it? It was an unusual event where a man with, born without the ability to walk suddenly is able to run and leap and move around without any assistance. Extraordinary, isn't it? It shouldn't have happened, couldn't have happened, and yet, it did. And because it happened, did you see what Peter was able to do, whether last week or this week? He was able to talk about Jesus. Peter let the people know that it was through the power of God that the man was able to walk, and it is through the power of God in Christ that they are saved. We saw that last week, but we also see it this week in our text as Peter uh, appears before the, the, the rulers and the authorities in that time. It says, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, If we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So this man being able to walk, it fit the definition, didn't it? This man born lame, now able to walk, fits as a miracle. And because it was a miracle, it provided Peter and those with him the opportunity to bear witness to the truth, to tell them about Jesus crucified, Jesus resurrected for their salvation. And dear friends, this is precisely why we need to expand our understanding of what qualifies as a miracle because it gives us the opportunities to bear witness to the truth, to tell them, the people of this world, about Jesus crucified, Jesus resurrected for their salvation. Now, I, I get it. There might be the question of watering down miracles, if we expand our understanding to the point where we may ask if they're really even special anymore. But let's do this. Let's look at that definition again. You see it there on the screen. It's an outstanding or unusual event, sometimes manifested by divine intervention in human affairs. Dear friends, let me ask you. When you look at the world around you today, what might be an outstanding or unusual event? Certainly a lame man being able to walk again would classify, for sure. 
Well, what about forgiveness? Is that an unusual event in our world today? What about compassion? Does that qualify? What about empathy or selflessness? What about listening without judgment? What about having relationships with people we disagree with? What about treating people with dignity and respect, not because of the badge they wear or the color of their skin, but because they are people created in the image of God and loved by him? What do you think? Do these qualify? Do they count as miracles? I believe they do. Because they are so outstanding and unusual in our world, they are things that people look at and say they can't happen, won't happen. And yet, dear friends, I know for a fact that they do happen. And they happen only and solely because of divine intervention in human affairs. Because of the power of God at work in your life and in mine. And just as I know these things do happen, I also know that on my own and by my own sinful self, there is no way these things happen. In fact, oftentimes, the exact opposite is what happens because of my sin and my sin-filled nature. And for that, I take Peter up on his words in the text to repent, to turn toward God, to ask for forgiveness, to ask for his power to be at work in my life, to change me, to perform those miracles daily in my life. How about you? Does forgiveness just happen naturally? Compassion? Empathy? All of the things we talked about? Or does sin stand in the way? This is why we take Peter up on his words to repent. To turn toward God, to ask for forgiveness, to ask for God's power to work in your life, to change you, to perform those miracles. Because that's what we're really asking for from our God in Christ, isn't it? We're really asking for a miracle in repentance. But you know, more than just asking... It's also what we receive. Forgiveness, compassion, empathy, selflessness, listening without judgment. Relationships with people God doesn't agree with. Yes, he doesn't agree always with you and me. And treating us as people created in his image and loved by him. That's what we receive. We receive the power of God at work in our lives in repentance. And it's that power that allows us to do extraordinary things in the eyes of the world. Things that our world believes just can't happen, won't happen. And yet through Christ, and because we have been joined to Christ, they become real right before their very eyes. Eyes that now become open to something unique, something different. Something unique and different that not only opens their eyes, but opens their mouth to ask a very important question. How? How can you forgive? How can you have empathy, compassion? How can you be selfless and listen without judgment? How can you have relationships with people you disagree with? How do you treat people the way that you do? How can you do that? Dear friends, what will you say? Will you say that you're just a nice person or it's just who you are? Will you take the credit? Or will you take the opportunity to share about Jesus? My hope and prayer is that whether it's in the neighbor's kitchen or in front of a court of law, we would be like Peter and be the community that bears witness to Christ's power at work in our lives. To be the community who shares the powerful truth that Christ is risen. He is risen risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. The community that not only talks about the how, behind the extraordinary and the miracles. But the who? Jesus Christ crucified. Jesus Christ resurrected for our salvation and for theirs. Amen. Amen. Amen.